Phil Harding with you here, talking about the 1980s. And I've talked a lot about Stock Aiken Wallerman, PWL Studios, Ian Kerno, all the people I've worked with, a lot of the artists that we've worked with and that I've played the tracks for. And it's worth mentioning that I've written my book talking about my journey through the 80s with Stock Aiken Wallerman and PWL Studios called PWL From The Factory Floor, available on my website, philhardingmusic.com. And we did lots of hits for Sunita, for Big Fun, Samantha Fox. Two albums with Dead or Alive. This is a tremendous amount of work across a fairly short period of time. Some unlikely collaborations with Zig Zig Sputnik, a record with Malcolm McLaren, Jermaine Stewart, Debbie Harry, and the list goes on and on. And I haven't even mentioned the famous duet by Kylie and Jason, especially for you. Open up any kind of greeting card and there's the title. Okay, we're into our last section. (laughs) And we're into 1990. I'm taking you 1990 into 91. Myself and Ian left at the start of 92. Unfortunately, Matt Aitken and Pete Hammond left somewhere around 91. We were kind of still riding high, but only just about. It's almost like the decade of the 1980s finished and there was a real feeling in the media and culturally that things needed to change. And certainly the club scene was changing. Our house had turned into Acid House. Our version of Chicago House might have been called London House. Generally, what we might call the general PWL sound seemed to be in a downward spiral. And it kind of made us try, shall we say, even harder to bring back that club audience that we lost, I feel, just after 87, and to really get back into the club. So this first record I'm going to play was a very blatant attempt to do that, and it worked. Lonnie Gordon, happening all over again, got to number four in the UK charts in January 1990 and reunited us with the Supreme Record label.
What a voice. It was like having Donna Summer back in the studio, back in front of me on my mixing desk and faders. A real pleasure to work with. And that did well for us. That got us back up to number four in January 1990. And a few tracks were made after that with Lonnie, but for some reason, no other big hits. It was a good time still in 1990. We had a big concert at the Albert Hall to celebrate with lots of the artists we'd worked with. And we were getting back into the club, so that was beginning to succeed for Pete. And this next record is another great example of that. From Kylie's third album, Step Back in Time. sound of a bright young future the look of a bright young britain they're all kind of slogans that went around peter will for me that's one of the favorite tracks that i worked on with kylie and that kind of retro club sound allowed us to get really into those funky club samples and brass and the beats and that's a wonderful track and they matched her image to it really well i thought at the time so that got to number four in november 1990 and as i was saying we were kind of struggling to stay with it in the early 90s and pretty soon after this a few people started leaving the work that was coming in for myself and Ian Kerno was largely sourced from outside, you know, other labels that wanted us to commercialise maybe the sound of something that wasn't quite right for radio. And a really good example of that is the work that we did with Jesus Jones, who were kind of a thrashy rock band at the time and had a good following, but hadn't hit the charts, hadn't really been supported by radio. So the label came to us with this song, International Bright Young Thing, and said, we need it radio friendly. What can you do guys so this was it jesus jones international bright young thing
Yeah, Jesus Jones. I don't think they sounded anything like that live, but by the time we'd kind of funked it up a little bit with our drum programming and a slightly different groove, it surprisingly worked well with all their wacky guitar sounds and really fantastic vocals. Really loved the vocalist. If you listen to the 12 inch versions of, of all the stuff that I've played today, we'll start with just a drum beat that DJs can mix into and we'll finish with a drum beat. Some simple ideas that really made things work in the clubs. We're going to round off the show with another guitar bass band. This is Voice of the Beehive and their cover of the Partridge Family's I Think I Love You. This got to 25 in September 91 and I left PWL in February of 92 with Ian Kerno and we moved on to the Strongroom Studios, based ourselves there as a production team and we went on to work with E17, Boyzone and a lot of those boy bands from the 1990s. So maybe I should be back sometime for a 1990 special. I'll see you then. Mm-hmm. 